Hello, 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 everyone. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, apologies for the green screen. I haven't figured out what it is about the light at this particular time of day that makes the thing go all nutty. Um, but it's not completely leaving me visible. That just made it worse. Um, I could turn up the do do filters. I can turn off the thing, but then I'll start to disappear. All right, well, we'll try that much. That's a little better. Okay, so, um, yeah, it looked better when I got up because the lighting was better, um, I think, and also because, you know, it had more contrast. Um, I tried wearing a purple shirt. I thought purple was as far as you could get away from green without looking like a Christmas tree. Um, or, you know, like a holiday decoration, because I look like Santa Claus if I put on a red shirt. Um, so I tried purple, and it's still, uh, the problem is I think the, the headset, um, which of course by tapping I made a big light sound. Anyway, um, so you can ask questions uh, on Discord chat. The questions to ask, the room is 2020.03, uh, 23, 3.30 p.m., uh, there seemed to be uh, fewer people that were in last time, although there's quite a few people, um, which is awesome. Um, the, uh, I'm hoping that last time was not just a look in audience, but that you guys will be uh, joining me live so that you can ask questions and I can answer them and I can uh, actually get feedback because I'm, you know, uh, I'm, 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 I'm me and I'm not the best. Also, um, the issue with the laptop, the screen blanking and everything. I'm trying something new. I don't know if it'll work, um, but what I did, I'm trying to stream from one computer and write on the other so that the other, when I write on this computer, the um, the stuff will stop. So I'll write on this computer and it will stream on the, uh, the over the internet, the thing will sync. Um, and then instead of trying to OBS from the desktop, from the laptop itself, I'm OBSing for the desktop. We'll see if that works a little bit better. Um, if uh, if it does work, that'd be awesome. Also, uh, thank you for very much the suggestions. I don't want to mention your name in chat uh, on Twitch, but uh, some people suggested that I get a um, uh, 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 the, the cooler for the tablet. I did so. I ordered one. It will be here. Uh, tomorrow, and then I also ordered a second Windows tablet, little cheap used one. Um, uh, well, not too cheap, but you know, used, refurbished, so that I'll have a backup plan when the thing goes bad. So we'll see, live and learn. Anyway, the quiz that I was supposed to put online and never did. Yes, I should be posting these online. Um, not so big of a deal now, um, but it will be a big deal once I get Proctorio to work. Hopefully, Proctorio will be working next week and if it is we will go back to the way that we were doing it except you'll be filling in the blanks on Proctoro. Um oh thank you. Someone just said in chat that I'm awesome. Uh that made me feel all sorts of good. Uh please don't uh uh make me mention your name on Twitch because then it violates uh user pri uh student privacy. Um so you know uh all those are on Discord. Now uh so anyway um also I can't hear you if you're asking questions in Discord. So I know that someone is actually speaking in Discord. Um, I cannot hear them, and I don't have a. Uh, 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 um, I don't have a, a TA today to actively mute people. Um, so I have to do it myself. So uh, you know, uh, how would someone ask you for a friend? How would someone take the quiz after the hard deadline? Um, <laughs> Uh, talk to me about it uh, after class, and we'll talk about it. Um, yes, yes, great memes that can be posted there, um, and we'll talk about that sort of thing. Um, I'm hoping to do a slightly shorter lecture today. I just want to finish up RSA um, and then start fresh. I counted out the sections, counted out the number of lectures left, um, and we should be fine uh, if I make a slightly shorter one and then um, uh, just try to go through the RSA stuff today. Um, and just kind of finish everything off in this section. Uh, are there any other questions, comments, issues, suggestions, thoughts? Okay, 
so that's the plan anyway. I've got um, stuff coming. I'm going to try to solve the, the screen issue. Um, so we'll see how it works. Uh, the first one, computing 3 to the 55 mod 5. So it's kind of hard. You know, I put into my calculator 3 to the 55. It goes... <laughs> um, so I need to actually do... Um, I need to break it up. So how can I break this up? Well, 3 cubed, I could do that. Um, and then... Uh, take that to the 11th. Let's see what 3 cubed is and see what, uh, I'm sorry, not 3 cubed, so not cubed, 3 to the 5th and then take that to the 11th and see what happens. Uh, so if I do, let's see, 3 to the 55 would equal 3 to the 5th uh, to the 55. Now, if I don't have a calculator on me, um, I can break this up some more. I can actually do this fifth bit if you want to. You could do it like this, 3 to the 3 uh, cubed is 27 um, times 3 squared all to the 55th. I'm sorry, not to the 55th. That should be to the 11th. Yep. And as you were pointing out in chat, um, again, I don't have a Michael here to yell at me today because he's dealing with stuff because he's about to get quarantined. Uh, not quarantine, you know, whatever, the, the, they're doing the thing where, you know, you can't leave the house now, so, you know, well, well, stay at home order type thing, so, um, he's out. So I could do it like this, and I wind up with, let's see, 3 cubed is 27, uh, 27 mod 5 is actually very helpful for me. So I'd wind up with 27. Uh, times 3 squared is 9, and mess up, uh, no, the, so, do the, do the exponents have to be prime? No, it just happened to be this way. I could actually make this 3 to the 55 times 3 to the first, if I wanted to. Wouldn't help me much, but I could, that's how you'd write an algorithm to do this. Um, and there was a suggestion that even though I'm not doing PHP anymore, um, as class assignments to do, like, start posting PHP code for some of this. Um, and I will. Uh, that was a good suggestion, but I got it this morning, and I haven't had time to implement said suggestion yet, so that the PHP could come back, even though we can't do problem sets anymore. Um, some people are saying don't do that. That I'll do it anyway, um, but not required. You don't have to. You don't have to go for it. Uh, but you know, uh, those sorts of things. Okay, so 27 and Z5, that's going to give me a 2 because I'm going to have 25. So what I've got really is 2, 9 is 4. So I've really got 2 times 4, sorry, this is still the 11th, and this is still to the 11th, which equals 8 to the 11th, which is the same thing mod 5 as 3 to the 11th. Are we all on board with that? Okay, so 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? So 5 whole, 1, 2, 5. Okay. All right. So um, I keep going with this, and I can go on and on and on and on and on like that. But, you know, let's, let's, let's do some calculator at this point. So I'm going to wind up, I'm going to break this up as 3 to the 5th times 3 to the 5th times, because I got 5 plus 5 plus 5, 3 to the 5th plus 3 to the 5th times 3 mod 5. And 3 to the 5th, I mean, I, as I said, I could go on and on and on without using my calculator, but at some point, let's throw out the calculator. So we do 3 to the 5th, and we wind up with uh, 3 to the 5th, right? So we do 3 to the 5th, we wind up with 243. And then we mod that by 5, and we wind up with 3. So this is going to be 3 times 3 times 3. And that, of course, is equal to 27, and that is equal to 2. Okay, did I do it right? Just checking, because today's been a bad math day for me. I've been doing stuff, you know, strange. Um, it, no, in calculus, it was horrible. Uh, I, I made so many mistakes the first time. You could go check out the mistakes on them. They're on the 930 Twitch feed. Um, now all my mistakes are public and immortal. Uh, so how do we feel about that one to five? Yeah, besides the fact that my head's in the way. Okay. 
Um, all right. So Alice has a public key of 657. I think originally, yes, originally I put three, but that's actually a bad one because um, that's not co-prime with, uh, with um, P minus one, Q minus one. But you actually wind up with the same answer if you use seven. So how do I do this? Well, what was the encrypt cipher for RSA? Okay, so how did I encrypt plain text? I took the C equals M to the seventh, because that's my E, mod, and then 65. So what I need to compute is I need to compute uh, 31 to the seventh mod 65, or 31 to the seventh in Z 65. Okay, yeah, you Google it. That's nice. So let's throw it into Google here. 31 to the seventh is our computer going to choke on that? I'm actually curious now. Did I choose something big enough for the computer to choke? Uh, not quite. My computer has enough digits. Google has enough digits to do it. Um, but, you know, let's say I didn't. So I did 31 squared, and I'd wind up with 971, and then I mod it by, oops, and then I can mod that by uh, 65. So if I do 31 squared mod 65, I wind up with um, 51. So uh, let's move this Z65 up here. So in Z65, 35 to the seventh equals, well, 35, 31, I'm sorry, 31 to the seventh equals 31 to the fifth times uh, 31 uh, squared, which equals 31, and actually equals 31 times 31 squared times 31 squared, right? Because now my things, uh, let's see, two, four, what have I done? Oops, I need a cube. Uh, well, I could do one more, and that would even be more efficient. So I wind up with 31 times 31 squared times 31 squared times 31 squared. My exponents now add up to the 7 required. Okay, so 31 squared mod 65 is 51. So that equals 31 times 51 times 51 times 51. Okay, so there's this question, why is 31? So text doesn't get encrypted in as a, a number. Uh, uh, um, uh, the, the, the way the book is doing it is extremely unrealistic. You don't encrypt the number, you don't encrypt the letter A as the number one when you do RSA, okay? What you do is you take a whole block of text, all right, represented by a number, right? So I've got eight bits representing this character, 8-bits representing this character, 8-bits representing this character. I've got a whole string, or 16-bits, or whatever I'm using, uh, or 8-bits is the usual thing. So I've got these three bytes here, and each one of them is represented by a number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that, 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 that those three bytes are some number together. That way I can't use, like, I can't figure it out by doing a, um, uh, I can't figure out what the thing is by doing uh, frequency analysis. I don't want to be able to do that because otherwise I'm just using a substitution cipher. And all this talk about RSA is kind of worthless. But if instead what I wanted to do is I wanted to do something like, um, uh, if, if instead I combine all this text into one big block, so essentially I'm encoding words. And remember, these are 2,000 digit primes. So I can encode something that's very, very long as one giant number, as one big block of text. So you can think of this as like making a zip file of my, of my, of my, uh, of my, of my, um, of my message, 
I make a zip file of the message, and then I encode the blocks as numbers, if that makes any sense. Um, so what I get is something that can't just be decrypted using frequency analysis. It doesn't make any sense um, as things alone. I don't want to just be decrypting it all in one go. Does that answer your question? Um, the other question is about uh, will the exponents of the test be uh, smaller on the test than question one? It depends whether or not I let you use calculators. Uh, my inclination right now is to let you use calculators because we're kind of done with the stuff I really didn't let you use calculators on. Um, and if that's the case, then I'm going to use large numbers because you have a calculator. Because um, I'm really interested in the strategy for figuring it out. What I didn't want before was to you hit, hit the combinatorial button on your computer, on your calculator. Um, I wanted you to actually figure out the formula for combinatorials. Um, does that make sense? Am I saying nonsense? Okay, so I figure out what this is here, 51 times 51 times 51. Well, 51 squared, so 51 times 51 in mod 65 is going to be 1. That's a nice number. Huh. So the question is, what is 31 times 51? Uh, so... Put that into my little calculator here, and I wind up with the number 21. So this number right here equals 21. How do we feel about that? One to five. Let me see if I can do it. Can I do it? Yes. Um, okay, so how did I go from 31 to 51? So this is not, so I've got 31 to the seventh here. Um, here I'm looking at, oops, wrong mouse. Here I'm looking at 31 to the seventh. Well, 31 to the seventh, I could split that up. See how the exponents here, 31 to the first times 31 squared times 31 squared times 31 squared. So this is 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1. So I wind up with a 7 here in the exponents. Okay, now when I square 31, as long as I did it right, if I square 31, I'm going to get a large number. So 31 squared is something, is 961. I'll write this over to the side here. 31 squared equals 961. And 961 mod 5, because remember I'm modding it by 5. Let me see if I can... Is there a way for me to grab this and move it without just doing the scroll bar? No. <clears throat> um, I'm not getting anyone sick, right? Just checking. So 961 mod uh, 51. Um, 961 mod 51, did I, no, not 51, I'm sorry, mod 65, that would totally mess me up. Um, 961 mod 51, mod 65 equals 51. So this became that 51, this became that 51, this became that 51, and that stayed a 31. Uh, that absolutely made no sense because you couldn't see any of those gestures. This one right here became that. This one right here became that. This one right there became that. And this one right there became that. So this right here, 51 times 51, okay, when I mod it by 65, ends up being 1. Okay? Mod 65. And that makes me very happy. The other two numbers, 31, because 1 is just a thing. Um, so 31 times 51 is... Uh, 21 mod uh, 65, um, and I just wind up with the number 21. Okay. Are we on board with that? Okay. So the next one here, Alice's public key was 65.7. What prime numbers did Alice use? Well, with the 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 seven. Um, 
Does the seven mean anything in this case? No, the seven is a red herring. The only number that really matters is the 65, right? So I sit there with my thing and I go, okay, well, what is that? Let's, let's see, 11 times five, you know, seven times five is 35, not big enough. 11 times five, eh, 55. Oh, uh, it's got a five in it, so I need a five. Uh, let's see, times five, 13. 13 will do it. So the numbers were five and 13. Uh, how far, how do we feel about that? Okay, I'm getting a lot of life's happy big numbers. Um, so there were multiple answers. The answers, there were multiple, there were two choices that were correct, um, and all the other correct choices were incorrect. On question one, uh, oh, three to the fifth mod, uh, mod five. So three to the fifth, I'm sorry, not three to the fifth. Uh, Right, three to the fifth is three. Three to the fifth. So three to the fourth, uh, what's that going to be mod five? How did I know without having to put it in my calculator that three to the fifth mod five was three? And the question is, what is three to the fourth? So this is a good question. Sorry, not mod three, mod five. So how do I know without putting it into my calculator that three to the fifth mod five is gonna be three? Well, uh, what is three to the fourth mod five and how do I know? Um, I just realized you can't see that. One. Why is it one? How do I know that without throwing anything in there? The reason I know that is Fermat's theorem, right? So if by Fermat's little theorem, three to the five minus one equals one. Uh, any other questions about that? Good question, though. Okay. All right, and then name one thing you found memorable from the last lecture. Probably all the gear failing, although the gear was better. Uh, any other questions? Okay, so how do we feel about the quiz? Yes, I'm glad you were paying more attention in chat than me. It made me feel so special. All right. Um, okay. So what we want to do today, are there any more questions? Yeah. So in Canvas, it said question four was only one point. It's actually worth two points. There's 11 points possible. Canvas won't let you do that. It won't let you say it's worth one, two points, it'll only let you say it's worth one point. Uh, when the grader goes in, the grader's gonna give you two points for that, so you'll end up with an 11 out of 10 or whatever it was. So there's a, a bonus point built into the thing, um, but, Canvas, but Canvas doesn't let you do that on quizzes unless you make it manually graded. Um, any other questions? Okay, so uh, there is a question, how many tests do we have left? I don't wanna sit here talking about the structure of the, yes, so the intention is for have all quizzes be out of 11 points at step. Um, and the, as I said, I should have posted this one and I didn't, uh, but Canvas is always gonna be a point short because you have to manually add another point. Um, 
Okay, and then test left, we've got test three, we've got test four, we've got an optional final. Uh, any other questions, comments, issues, suggestions, thoughts? Okay, so let's see here. I just found like a major mistake in my notes, so I like deleted half of them. Um, uh, I'm not answering the calcs on test question again. Um, I haven't decided yet. Um, when I figure out what exactly the test is going to look like now that we're doing it online, I will tell you the answer to that. Um, but I can't answer that question again because I've already uh, talked about the fact that I wasn't answering that question uh, several times. Uh, the optional final, the final is optional with the drop. So if you uh, if you are happy with your score after four tests, don't show up. Um, if you're unhappy with your store, come to the final, and the final will replace your lowest test score. Uh, at least that's what I believe the thing said. Um, I could be mistaken. It's been a while since I looked at it. Uh, okay. So uh, check the syllabus. Whatever the syllabus says is correct. Uh, anyway, so are we on board with that? Okay. Uh, anyway, so today what I want to talk about, I just kind of want to finish off why RSA works. Uh, why do we care? Um, and I'm going to skip the section on, um, on authentication. This is this little thing. Please read it on your own if you feel so inclined. Um, you can do message authentication with it. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about how to decrypt it. Um, so recall from before that this is what Alice is doing. Uh, Alice is uh, choosing prime numbers P and Q, uh, computing N equals PQ and K equals P minus one Q minus one, and she chooses E so that GC so that the the greatest common divisor is one so the co prime so that it has an inverse. Uh, we should just write that in there, right? So, so E has an inverse. And then she computes D equals 1 over E and Z K. Now, be careful with the K's and the N's in this. Um, the, the, the K is the thing that I'm not telling anybody. That's the modulus that I chose the inverse for DN. Um, and so my encryption formula is C equals M to the E. And my decryption formula is M equals C to the D all in ZN. Okay. And I need to show, in order to show that this works, I need to show that encrypting and decrypting will say, will give me the same plain text. So what I need to say is that if I encrypt, if I decrypt the encryption, I get the original. And I need to show that's always true. Um, and again, I'm showing that these are just, these are all just numbers. So how do we feel about that? So how do we feel like what we need to show in order to show why this works? Okay. So uh, D is the inverse of E in ZK. So remember last week, that was Z40 that we were playing at. So if I come back up to there. Right, so here I computed D which was the inverse in mod 40 of our original E. Okay. I, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, do I need to zoom it in more? There we go. So this was my, uh, this was my number that she chose, and this was my inverse of that number in Z40. Not in Z55, in Z40. Uh, okay. Run one. So what I'm going to do here, um, so that's what we're going to share. 
So I do a little manipulation of this thing, right? I, I, I have, now I'm just going to work in ZN. Now, note, don't confuse ZN and said K. N was the 55 last time and K was the 40. Is everyone on board with that? One to five, how do we feel about the difference between N and K? Okay, we just need to keep these things straight in our brain. All right. Um, so in 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 the in the other case was fifty five. So I'll just write this. Um, and said K was in forty last time. So this is the product of the two primes, and this is the thing that's P minus 1, Q minus 1. All right. Uh, so I just want to keep them straight. And I'm computing these things mod n or, you know, in Zn or Z55 uh, last time. Um, and I need to show that uh, encrypting the decrypt, I, I need to show that these numbers are equal. That that when I throw um, when I throw it, when I when I have this formula here, okay. If I put sub this formula into this formula, I wind up with the exact same number. Uh, or other way around. When I sub this in here, when I sub into the E mod n in here for c, I wind up with m equals n. Okay, I have to wind up with the exact same number. In other words, I need to show that this number right here, me, I need to show, show me mod n to the e mod n equals, oh, I'm off the page again, aren't I? I need to get one of those tilt mouses, don't I? The scrolls. Okay. I need to show that this right here equals N. Because that would mean that encryption and decryption, did, uh, that, that when I decrypted the text, I would get the exact same thing. All right. Uh, D -D -D. Let me zoom out so you can see that. There we go. All right. Yes, it's asymmetric encryption, but I need to show that I have basically a right-handed inverse. I need to show that um, even though it's asymmetric, um, even though that, that, that you couldn't do this, that when I work out the numbers, I wind up with the exact same piece of text. Uh, good question. Good question. Okay. So I make that substitution that I just did, and I wind up with what I need to show is that m to the ed, m equals m to the ed and zn. Is everyone on board with that? Okay. Now, remember what d and e is. This is actually kind of slick. And this is the part where I messed up on my notes last time. So, you know when I messed up with my notes, and then I had to delete everything below this because uh, I made a boo-boo. So I'm going to do this without, you know, doing the notes in advance, and hopefully the computer won't fail on me. Okay. Now, oops, I didn't want to put that much. How much of this, this M to the ED bit, why did I choose D to be? I chose D to be something in particular. I chose those numbers to eat. Yes, D is the inverse of E, but not in Z55, not in Zn, in Zk. 
And that's what's like slick about this, okay? I've got a different modulus that I'm playing with. I'm playing with two different moduli. I'm playing it here in ZK, and then I'm playing in ZN as well. All right? So it's a little slick, this little trick. Okay? In other words, I chose D so that this was true. In other words, I chose D so that there is some number Uh, we'll call it S. Okay, I'm no longer going to answer questions about the test in chat. Um, you guys would not be asking me that question directly in class. You'd be listening and giving me odd faces. Um, and so I kind of want to keep it there, sort of. All right, I'm not going to just ask as ask your questions about the test. Um, so, you know, you'd be you'd be listening and be, you'd be trying to guess. And I'm kind of going to go back to making you guess. But I will be giving you a study guide. So I'm not going to answer any more questions about the test. Um, there is some number, call it S, some integer. I don't know what it is. I don't really care what it is. What I care about is the fact that this number S, I care about the fact that E times d equals 1 plus s to the p minus 1 q minus 1. Okay. Why is that true? What have I said? Right? I know that this piece right here right? this piece equals zero mod forty uh, mod forty in the mod k. Okay, is everyone on board with that? What I've said is I've said that uh, whatever it is, right? I've said that ED over P minus 1 Q minus 1 equals 1. I'm sorry, equals some number S. Uh, and with a remainder of one. One to five, how do we feel about that? I, I, I feel I may have lost people there. Okay, I did. Okay, so what I'm saying when I'm doing this, let me do it in a different pen. No, there's only one D. Um, in other words, okay, how did I get this number? I took my K. In other words, I took K and I divided it into E times D. Because that's what it means to do something mod K. Is everyone on board with that? Um, so I took K and I divided it into e, to E, D. And when I got that, I said that E, D equals 1. In other words, D is the inverse of E in mod K. So K, K into E, D equals S 
some number s, don't know what it is, remainder 1. In other words, in other words, ED over K equals S plus one over uh, K. How do we feel about that one to five? This number right here is K. Okay, so I did ED over K, right? When I did the thing, right, I get K. Uh, remember, when I did this long division in grade school, I would get S remainder 1, which your teacher then told you, like, three weeks later, because it's grade school, three weeks later that that was really S plus 1 over K. Um, not to insult you if you don't remember this from grade school. Um, I didn't right away until someone said, oh, yeah. Um, so that's fine, if you don't remember it right away. Um, but that implies that ED equals K times S plus 1. So all I did there was I multiplied both sides by K. And this statement right here, gets me that. Okay. How do we feel now? Are we back on board the crazy train? And, and this is a detail that is, it's important but it, it, it's, it's now, you're going to lose the big picture if you get mired in this detail. So don't worry so much about this detail. The thing to remember is that ED equals 1 plus some number, I don't really care what it is, times K. All right. Now, there's a question in chat. Why do we do substitution to get what we had originally? Um, we, we do substitution here. Uh, this original bit of substitution was this is what we need to show. This is what we want to show. Because if we can show that, oh, you can't see that because I'm on the other screen. We, that's the thing we want to show. Because if we can show that, then we can prove what we wanted to prove. There was that encrypt we would get the same number if we encrypted and decrypted. Um, so that's the thing we're trying to do. Um, and if that's still confusing, hold off on that thought, and uh, I'll come back to it. Um, I don't want you to be confused, but I, I do want to kind of uh, um, uh, talk about this a little bit. Um, and then I can come back to that. Okay, so I chose this bit. I chose this number so that I got, this was the whole purpose of choosing D. D was the inverse of E in K, which means that E times D equals 1 mod K, or 1 mod 40, which was our original, right? So this was our original 40. So that, was, that looks like a 5 there, doesn't it? So ED equals 1 plus S times 40. 
and I don't really care what S is, okay? But I have to put something there uh, for the moment because of this next bit, okay? Um, and I'm afraid I've lost some of you. Hopefully, I'll bring you back in just a moment. This is a detail. Don't get lost in this detail. Don't be sitting there going, why, why, why? It's a detail. Um, and I have to wear the stupid glove still. All right. So what is it about this little detail that I care about? All right. So because I have that, I know that MD, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that one off the top, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have M, let me go back to blue, M to the ED equals M to the one plus S times K. And I'll just leave those other things there as that for a moment. Um, okay. I have a request to use the pen and I shall. That sounds like a good suggestion. Uh, Um, so I'm doing that, and I have the, now that, now I have, well, okay. So M to the 1 plus SK. Now, so the M does not equal the PQ. The M equals my bit of message text, okay? That's my plain text. is the M. And I'm going to encrypt it like this. So the question is, I've got M equals 1 plus A. Well, let's pop off an M, right? So this is an exponent. So by the rules of exponents, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do M times M to the SK. How do we feel about that 1 to 5? Okay. All right. So all I did was I said that ED equals 1 plus SK. Um, and that means that, you know, I pop off one of the M's and I use exponent rules and I get this little bit. Now, why did I want to do that? Why do I care? Well, remember what that thing was. Now I've got something to the P minus 1 and something to the Q minus 1. Remember what K equals. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's do something else. Let's pull this S out and let's put it on top instead. So let's do M to the P minus 1 to the Q minus 1 to the S. Okay, and this is section 8.4. 8 it's the last bit of 8.4. Now, what do I know about P and Q? P is prime. Q is prime. And neither, right, they're, they're both prime. So there's two possibilities here. 
Forget about the S. As I said, forget about the S. The S was a placeholder. Forget about what the S is. I don't care. What I care about is this number right here. Now, there, what's if I've got something to a prime power, what is it? To a P minus 1 power. What have I got? Well, there's two possibilities. Ah, what was the thing about a number to a p minus 1 power? Yeah. Number to a p minus power, Fermat's theorem. Right now, I don't know if I could apply it because I don't know what the power of m, I don't know what m is. But there's only two possibilities. Either M, either the GCD, either GCD of N M equals one. I'm sorry, not uh, either that's true. Or it's not. Now, if the GCD of N and M equals 1, I could apply Fermat's little theorem. All right, so and that that equals m, and I'm done. Right? I said that m. I said that this thing done because m to the e d equals m, and that's what I wanted to show. I made this big hassle about that's the fact that that's the thing I needed to show in order to show this thing worked. Now, what's the other case? The other case is what happens, not if they're even, what happens if it's not 1? What happens if either P or Q divide M? Right, because those are the only possibilities. Either I'm co-prime or they divide, right? Because these are prime numbers. So there's the question. What happens if either of those is true? Do I wind up with zero or not? What do you all think? Let me pull out my notes, the ones with the mistakes in them, and make sure that I have this right now. Okay. Is it zero? Is everything zero? Hmm. Hmm. 
One of them's got to be. How can I get out of this trap? This is where I made the mistake before, so I'm going to be a little iffy here because it took me a while to fix this. What's going on here? Okay. So what are we left with? We've got m to the ed. Right? And we've got two possibilities. We've got if p or q divide q. So suppose p divides q. Then what happens? Anyone want to hazard a guess? Maybe oppose it. I love you guys. That's just great. Okay. The P divides the, right? So I've got M to the ED, right, equals zero. Okay. Which is the same thing as M mod. And suppose Q divides it. Either way, what's true? Yeah. So if either way, I'm going to wind up with m equals zero. But that's fine, because what is it I wanted to show? I wanted to show this bit, right? I wanted to show that m to the ed equals m. Okay? How do we feel about that, 1 to 5? Okay, so now that I've got all of this, I've shown this bit here, okay? So now what I know, now I know that P divides m to the ed minus m. Okay, so from this statement here, I get this. So everyone on board with that. And then from this statement here, I get an equivalent statement. I get the statement that q divides m ed minus m. Are we all on board with that? I get these two statements for, okay? So by the previous argument again, I get that there's some T Right, I, I don't care what it is, um, and I get that there's some 
Ooh, how could I say this? But the previous argument I get, I get... Ah, uh, sorry. And now it failed again. Give it a minute. Okay, it's back. So, by the previous argument, again, I get that these two things are divided. What is F, rip? What'd I do? Oh, the keyboard? Yeah, yeah, it died. All right, by the previous argument, again, I get that... I get that, uh, where was it? M E D minus M equals, right? I got P divides it. T P for some T. And I also get that M E D minus M equals, uh, U Q. For some you. How do we feel about that? One to five. Okay. All right. So. Oh, sorry. So these are, it's that same argument I made before. Um, so this is that thing where I said, okay, so I've got here that MED equals M mod P, which is zero, right? So I've got that P must divide both of these. It's the same thing, uh, let me see here. Let me put this. I've got the same argument again, and I'm talking to you like I'm on this thing, like you can see what I'm talking about, right? So this right here gives me this statement, okay? This right here says that P uh, divides M E D minus M. Is everyone on board with that? This may be where I lost everybody. Okay, so here I've got that this right here, if I say that M E D equals zero, and I say that M equals zero mod P, okay? What I've said is that P divides both uh, both M, E, D, and M. Okay. So is everyone on board with that bit? Let me see if I can regain what was going on here before I run out of time. Uh, okay. All right. So that means that P divides M E D minus M. Because P divides that and P divides that, so P divides both. Okay? Or it is the case right? Okay. Oh, sorry. My head is in the way. Again. Okay. So that is the case. And it is the case, since I've got this thing that's true, I've also got the case that, um, so either way, P must divide this and these things must be true. Because P divides M, so this whole thing is going to be 0 mod P. And then likewise mod Q, okay? Either one is going to wind up being 0. So for both of these, 
Either way, so let's do this. Okay, either way, here or here, it doesn't matter which one I divide. I wind up with these with this statement here. And then I wind up with the statement that these things are true. Okay? Um, so if I've got these two statements, by the previous argument, again, I get MED minus M equals T. Right? So I've just said that this divides. That means there's some integer times P that gets me that. And then there's some integer times Q that gets me the other thing. That may, is that better? Um, okay. Again, you're getting marred in the details, um, which is fine. I mean, that, that's, that's part of the thing about this proof. So um, uh, we're going to put a little star there. So I want to put, I'm going to put a star on the lines that are really important. This line is really important, okay? Because I can use Fermat's theorem to be done with it, okay? But I have to deal with the case if Fermat's theorem doesn't apply, and that's what I'm trying to do now. So right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to deal with this idea that maybe Fermat's can't be used, okay? All right. So let's, let's actually mark this here. Okay, so the point is now what I wind up with is zero. Okay, so now how do I recover? So what I need to do now is I need to finish off recovering that number. Okay, and I need to show that the ciphertext is still the same. Okay. So um, I'm going to wind up with Q. This is the understanding and the proof, and it's crucial for one little thing. So the using of the thing, the really cool part was the fact that I get to apply formats theorem. OK, so the really cool stuff, the really essential stuff is right here. Now I'm just cleaning up this other case. OK, does that make sense? So I care about the fact that there exists this other case and that there exists a way to clean it up. How's that? Is that a good answer for you? Um, is the formula on the screen vital? No. The thing that's vital to your future understanding is this bit. OK, the thing that's just cleaning up this extra case is this bit. And it's ugly. And I'm, I'm sorry, there's just no other way to do it. Um, but to kind of just clean it up. Okay. But the point is I make all these little substitutions. Okay. Um, and what I wind up with, right, since Q and P are distinct numbers, all right, I wind up with this idea that these two things right here are equal. So... I wind up with TP equals UQ. How do we feel about that bit? Okay. And I wind up with now the following. Yes? Okay. So what I wind up with in the end do I really want to do all this little details? You know what? We're fine without the details. Let's just be fine without the details, okay? Um, if it's not true, what happens if either P or Q divide M? Instead of going into the, the nitty-gritty details on this, let's just get rid of the details because those details are confusing me. So suppose that P divides M. Basically, where this thing is going is proving that I wind up with the zero that I'm intending to get to. Um, but the point of this is that I wind up here with this bit here. Let's just kind of...
let's get rid of this part of the life and simplify it, okay? Are we, how do we feel about getting rid of that part of the life and just simplifying where we're going, okay? So let's do a little hand-waving over the things. Um, oops, I didn't want to erase that last bit. I need that last bit. Oops, not wrong keyboard. Uh, the other keyboard's not hooked up. Okay, so I can't, let's see, undo. No, I didn't want to erase that. I want to keep this bit here. Oops. I want to keep this bit here. Okay, and I want to kind of keep this bit here. All right, but what I want to wind up with is that these two things are true. I've got that P divides this thing, and I've got that Q divides that thing. Okay, but that means that P times Q divides M E D minus M since P and Q are both prime. How do we feel about that one to five? Erase everything I did before. I'm almost finished, and I'm sorry I'm running over because my the thing was a little bit confused. And I lost everybody when I told them I was just dealing with a special case, didn't I? They all went away. Okay. So what happens if P or Q? Well, then I get M, and then I get this mod Q. Either way, these two things are true. Now, P times Q must divide MED minus P, since both P and Q are prime. Okay? Now, if I have that result, I now have that means that MED minus M uh, equals zero mod P times Q. Okay? How do we feel about that? One to five. Or MED, right? Okay. Let me do it like this. NZPQ, which is the same thing as ZN. But look what that means. So now I add M to both sides. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to add M to both sides, and I wind up that MED equals M N Z N, which is what we wanted. Oh, goodness. I hate that. Anyway, that was it. The cool thing is the formats. The very cool thing is the formats up here. So the really cool thing is here. And then I tried to do the thing that was in the book and do all the little details, but the details are crap. So we're going to throw them away. And now I'm not going according to the book again, but I'm going to live with it. Um, okay. So how do we feel about that? One to five. Okay, so I had you all all up to format, and then I tried to do details that were in the book that weren't necessary, and you all hated me. Um, but that's fair. I'll get better at this um, as we go along. Um, okay, so today the whole point was to prove – I'm going to bring it back. Um, today the whole point was to prove that uh, the, th the system works, Okay. So the big things to keep a track of, the day the whole point was to prove that the system works. So the big things to keep track of here are that because I chose D to be this number, because I chose D to be this inverse, I can either use Fermat's theorem, okay, um, which gets me out of this mess, or the mess was trivial to begin with because everything was zero, so I can just move everything aboard and I get what I want. Okay, that was kind of the point. Either I can use Fermat's theorem or I didn't need to use Fermat's theorem because the case was uh, something that I could deal with without it. Um, all right, uh, so that was the whole point of today. Uh, we're going to start Chapter 5 on Monday. 
Uh, thank goodness. And then we will do sequences. I'm going to kind of try to skip through it. Um, I'm going to try to do like an overview of recursion, do some algorithms, um, and do a couple little things. And then we'll do um, uh, fun stuff. Now, there'll be no web assign today. There will be web assign on Tuesday because on Tuesday we are going to have. Um, uh, uh, on Tuesday, we're going to start chapter five. Uh, Monday, we're going to start chapter five. Um, also, online, don't forget there's a problem set. It's under coding sets. Of course, there's no code. You need to submit your notes for Monday and today and tell me some other things. Um, and you have to do that in Gradescope. If you have issues with Gradescope, please bug me on Discord. I'll be happy to help you. Any other questions? Okay, uh, so that's it for me. I am, oh, what type of glove am I wearing? I'm wearing the glove that lets you, um, it's called a pen, an artist glove or digital artist glove or something like that. And the whole point is that when I hover over the screen now, it doesn't, because it's got the felt thing, it doesn't feel the touch type. Um, so you submit notes on, uh, um, uh, 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 the um, yes, by tomorrow, uh, it should not be. I thought it was Monday. Um, I'll, I'll check again. Uh, uh, but it's on grade scope, and I think I made it do Monday. If I didn't make it do Monday, I'm gonna go make it do Monday. Uh, because I wanted it to be Monday. Yes, I wanted yours to be due on Monday, so it's on grade scope. Um, if you got work back, you got a message to sign into Gradescope, but I will send everybody the Gradescope message again. Uh, any other questions? Uh, okay. Um, so that is, there's no link to upload on Gradescope. The link should go live uh, tonight at midnight. Um, so that's when the link should open, and then it should close on Monday. Um, and then the uh, and then all other issues. And then I'm working out uh, next week. We are going to start trying to use Proctoro. I'm going to give, kind of give like a week's grace to kind of let's figure it out together because I don't know how to use it either because I got like zero training on this before um, everything went boom. So um, I'm kind of making it up as I go. Um, uh, kind of like the math, right? Uh, any other questions, comments, issues, suggestions, thoughts? Uh, no, it's going to be sad, Abdullah. You can't cheat. I'm going to be brokenhearted. Um, also, there's something about pass-fail, um, so make sure you read it. I don't know if that applies to us. I don't know if this is a if this class um, allows you to do pass-fail or if it counts as one of your um, um, what you might call it requirements because there's like a there's a bunch of classes that you can't take by pass fail, and one of them is your quantitative reasoning class. So if this counts as your quantitative reasoning class, you have to take it for a grade. If it doesn't count for your quantitative reasoning class, you're done. You're fine. Uh, okay, so that's it. Um, I'll hang around for a little bit, and then I have to go uh, do uh, another uh, calculus help session. Um,